Everyone's switching to D5 Render. So in today's video, let's check out its latest version 2.4 with its new features and how it compares to other similar render engines out there. If you want to check out the extensive list of these new features and update, I have included a link in the description section of this video. We'll also take a quick look on some benchmark results submitted by other D5 render users. So make sure to watch till the end of this video. First up, we're getting a brand new GI, also known as Global Illumination. To have a better understanding, let's compare the rendering output of the previous version 2.3 with today's version 2.4. There's an obvious enhancement in the accuracy of its lighting calculations. This is a huge deal, especially for dark lit scenes. I guess we no longer need to put in some additional artificial lighting. The details in the shadow areas look clean. This only means one thing, faster rendering time. To achieve more realism with translucent materials, we now have an option to use subsurface scattering. This is used to enhance the visibility and translucency of materials such as ceramics, marbles, jade skin, fruits, candles, and many others. Having subsurface scattering is extremely important, especially in real-time rendering. To access this feature, press the letter I of your keyboard or use the Select Material tool. Pick the material to be modified and select Subsurface Scattering. Play around with the subsurface color and scattering intensity. Next up is optimized emissive effect. There's a huge improvement for scenes where emissive lighting as well as curved emissive materials are optimized. You can now safely use emissive lighting as the only main light source. The new GI now supports multiple light bounces from emissive materials which helps produce softer lighting with more accuracy and realism. If you want more flexibility and smoother video playback output, this next feature will seal the deal. Higher frame rate options. We now have the following frame rate options available at our fingertips. 24, 25, 30, 60, and 120 frames per second. To enable this feature, go to your preference settings, widget, and activate the frame rate option. Then go to your video frame rate settings to check. With the new optimized path tool, creating traffic and vegetation path scenes are made easier. You can adjust the smoothness parameter of your corner nodes, as well as setting fixed spacing distances of your vegetation assets. To add a depth of field effect or create a fog for your scenes, go to the Effect tab, select Style, and use the slider to control the distance between the white and black points relative to your camera. Changes made from these values will be reflected in the final rendered image or animation. If you're into landscape scenes, you will appreciate this next one. Optimize Scatter Assets and Hedge. Using the optimized vegetation scatter tool, you can assign a material with vegetation without any visible gaps. Go to scatter tool, assets, 
Hedge category, set the density, activate the align to terrain option, and assign it to your selected material. Creating hedges has never been this easy. An update won't be complete without newly added models and materials in the asset library. To name a few, there are new Asian characters, dynamic vegetation assets, landscape lamps, new circular environment planes for backgrounds or backdrops, holiday assets like firework particles. All of these are expected to be constantly updated for added context, dynamic animations, and realism. To have a sense of D5 render's speed and capability, let's do a quick animation render test. It is good to note that D5 render uses ray tracing. Other render engines like Twinmotion use path tracing, which in some cases gets the job done, but the main caveat is the rendering time. Let's take this simple scene animation for a spin and test out how long it would take to finish rendering. And just to satisfy my curiosity, I took the same scene with the same settings and did an animation render test in Twin Motion. The estimated rendering time was over 2 hours. That's way too long. But don't just take my word for it. Here are some benchmark results submitted by other D5 render users. You can also type in your GPU to filter out the results. This right here is the same as the one that I'm using for my renders. If you want, you can download this benchmark tool and try it out for yourselves. I'll leave a link in the description section below. In my opinion, D5 render has a great balance between speed and quality, the stability and accuracy of real-time rendering experience, and the ability to achieve top-level rendering output within the shortest possible time is all we need. Check out this next video right here.